This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Garen Kitchen and this is your weekly dose of tech in the West. I'm very excited because we have a fantastic episode for you guys. Uh, Shannon is going to be joining us to talk about ways that we can own our own cloud. That's right. She's talking about own cloud. And then I'm going to be talking about ways where you can recover your Windows password just in case you forgot it. Very quickly, USB rubber ducky payload gets Windows passwords, 15 seconds. No need to even crack anything. It's just, it's stupid easy. I, I, I need a drink. I'm going to, I'm going to the Baltic for a brew, but you guys should come with me because we're going to crack Windows passwords. Feels like that's what we've been doing for the last eight years, cracking Windows passwords. But every year you got to do one of those, you know? Oh, hey, is that a Windows password? Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, what you crack that? I know. So what we're going to do today is recover a Windows password, no cracking necessary, in about 15 seconds with the USB rubber ducky. Honestly, uh, the ducky is not necessary for all of this stuff. I just love the whole concept of automation, and I thought that this would be the perfect example of uh, setting the duck in a, a twin mode where we can actually mount it as m both mass storage and as a human interface to di device to do our little typey-typey attack. Uh, so, to, to preface all of this, basically, uh, the concept is to recover passwords, and there's a couple of different tools to do that. Uh, I, I know in the past, historically, we've talked about things like PW Dump and tools of that, those natures, where basically we get like the Windows SAM file, and then we run that through a cracker, and uh, you know, either using like rainbow tables or other sorts of tables, or you know, just brute force John the Ripper style, we can end up getting. Uh, you know, brute forcing the, either that LM or NTLM hash and then recover the, um, the password. And that's all really fun, except there's an easier way, it turns out, um, using something like the Windows Credential Editor or Mimikatz, uh, and that these tools basically allow you to pull the password right out of memory. So that's really fun. Uh, let me show you an example here. I'm pulling up a uh, command prompt, let's bypass UAC and go to my dev folder. Um, and WCE, or Windows Credential Editor, is a tool that will allow you to very simply, if I do WCE Tech W, we'll go ahead and show my password. There we go. My user is DK. The uh, name of the computer is DKZ3. And my password is, of course, lame password. So what I'd like to do now is basically write a ducky script that will automate all of this and save that back to the micro SD card on the duck. See, uh, I know that just a few weeks ago we talked about doing exfiltration with the duck, which is a lot of fun, and this is the perfect example of the kind of exfiltration uh, techniques that you might want to use on a target system during your pen test because you're able to very quickly, like 15 seconds, um, get that password and save it onto the disk so then later when you're on the network you can connect to it and, um, you know, back up all that fun data. So. Um, I, uh, and I want to give props over to Red Meat UK here for uh, being the first one to kind of bring this up in the uh, USB rubber ducky forums. And I wanted to expand on his uh, technique here and actually show how to do this um, using some of the alternative firmwares. See, this is one of the most beautiful things about the USB rubber ducky project is that you know we can actually uh, use alternative firmware. It's an open source project, and uh, and it's really come a long way. So. Uh, props to Midnight Snake, props to uh, DNUCNA, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, as well as Overrath. Um, if you head over to Ducky Decode, it's uh, code.google.com, project name is Ducky Decode, you can see here, this is an, a, uh, another version of the Ducky, both firmware and encoder. The firmware adds things like multilingual, uh, or sorry, the encoder adds things like multilingual support for, you know, US, Great Britain, Germany, you know, French and all of that. And um, that's really cool. And firmware wise, there's a lot of awesome options in here. So for example, we can, you know, support multiple, you know, support heads on Windows, Mac, or Linux. We can also do mass storage, which we're going to do today. Uh, we can do multiple payloads, which is cool. There's a version of the firmware where based on if you have caps lock enabled or scroll lock or num lock enabled, you can have different payloads execute uh, or concurrently. So that's uh, really a cool feature I like. Um, and then we can do composite stuff, but, uh, uh, oh, 
another awesome one. I, I guess we'll get into it when I just dive in, but uh, vid and PID changing, which is really cool. Every USB device has a vendor ID and a product ID, and if you change those, um, you're less likely to, you know, say, um, discover that it's a duck. I mean, every duck has the same vendor ID and product ID. It's kind of like the MAC address for physical access, right? So you can spoof your vendor and product just like you would spoof your MAC address to say, look like a different kind of device, uh, which is really cool. So I've gone ahead and flashed this duck with the uh, firmware for, uh, for this version for uh, Twin Duck version 2.1, okay? And this is going to allow my device to show up as both, um, both mass storage and as a human interface device, and it's going to type my payload. So a little bit of a caveat here is that your payload is going to be at, is going to need to be under 2,000 keystrokes, which actually thus far has not become an issue with any of the payloads that I've seen, uh, even with. Um, you know, reverse shell kind of stuff. It's not that much of an issue. Uh, the limitation there is that it reserves your payload and actually the first four kilobytes of memory on the duck before it switches over. So uh, it's really cool stuff and props to everybody involved uh, in the source code there to make that happen. Uh, Midnight Snake and, and it's really just uh, a fantastic uh, example of what can be done with, you know, open source hacking devices and things of that nature. Um, the other caveat here is that the write speed on this device is about 150 kilobytes a second, which is not huge. But for text files, for what we're trying to do here, it's going to be fine. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into this payload. So this is based on code from Met Redmi UK and Shutin and Daifuka. Um, and basically, this is my uh, twist on it, which allows you to use the uh, Twin Duck firmware that I mentioned uh, to run Mimikatz and save it to the SD card as the computer name passwords.txt, which is great because that limitation of 150k a second isn't really that big of a deal for just a text file of my password. So, same as uh, last week, we're going to quickly bypass UAC using this bit here. It's just you know pulling up Run and hitting that, and then Alt Y and Bob's your uncle. Uh, from here I'm going to go into my dev folder and uh, the rest of it is this quick loop here which basically does just like last week, it finds the string ducky in a uh, WMIC volume get and so that's going to figure out the drive letter of the SD card since it's actually going to mount as both mass storage and show up as a human interface device. Now I set that using uh, set duck equals so now uh, the d so duck becomes a system variable and we can use that here in the last part where we basically execute Mimikatz. So off percent duck percent, which on my system is, is sometimes H colon backslash, but on your system it's going to be, I don't know, D or F or E. Um, we're going to run Mimikatz Alpha X64. So when you download Mimikatz, you'll notice that there are uh, basically four different versions, whether it's for NT5 or NT6, and whether it's for 32-bit uh, or 64-bit. So Mimikatz is really wonderful because it will target a, um, you know, just a huge wide swath of machines, you know, anything from Windows XP all the way to Windows 8, both 32 and 64. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, and I'm going to use a little walker here to send the output of that over to, uh, again, percent duck percent, so, you know, our drive, and then percent computer name percent, which is, you know, in my case, DKZ3 or whatever the name of your computer is, dash passwords.txt. Delay for just uh, 100 milliseconds and we'll run these commands. Let me show you in here, I'll follow along and go to the alpha and x64. And the thing about Mimikatz is it's really awesome. This, uh, all of the props for this go to Gentle Kiwi. Uh, so hit him up on Twitter, some love, because this is a really sweet tool. Uh, he's French. It's in French. So deal with some French commands. It's all good. Uh, so within Mimikatz, what we want to enter is privilege colon to colon debug. And then we'll enter in uh, secure LSA colon colon log on passwords full and real quick you saw a bunch of stuff go by if I scroll up you can see there it is lame password 
I know it's a horrible password, don't use it. But for illustration purposes, there we go. We now have my user, my machine, the domain, the LM hash and NTLM hash if I were trying to like pass the hash or something like that. Um, but there we go, that's Mimikatz, and then we exit. So when we do all of that piping to a file, as we're doing right here, we'll now have on the SD card just a quick little text file of that. And this is beautiful because it's using the percent computer name percent variable. We can now just go ahead and plug this into all of the different machines and back up all of their passwords. Really quick and easy. So with all of that, we pretty much just GTFO and do two exits, one to get out of Mimikatz and one to get out of our command prompt. And then we leave nothing on the desktop for the user when they come back from the washroom and they find out that they should really learn Windows key L before they walk away from their desk. But you know, that's that. Uh, so let's go ahead and try this out. I'm gonna go ahead and insert my duck. And you'll see that this happens just extremely quickly. Uh, in fact, let me open up my computer so you'll see as the, uh, the drive shows up, it becomes available, and you'll see that it's labeled Ducky. So you'll notice the LED is slightly different, and that's because we're using the Twin Duck firmware, so we get a little green and red action here. We now have our Ducky uh, drive show up. And since I'm using my vendor ID and uh, product ID changer, uh, the vidpid.bin, which you put on the route, I'll show you that in a minute, uh, will um, it will actually go ahead and install the drivers because this is literally the first time I've plugged it into this machine. So with that said, I could either unplug it and plug it back in now that the drivers are set, or I could just press the button to redo the payload. So I'll go ahead and press the button. And there goes my payload. Bypassing UAC. And this is gonna happen real quick. Found its E colon in this case, and we're done. And so if I go into my Ducky Drive E here, I mean, at this point, I can just walk away. We're done. We can go back to our machine and do the rest of the work. Uh, but I'll just show you on this machine here, on the E Drive, you can see now I have a DKZ3, the name of my computer, dash passwords.txt. I go in there, and there's my password. It's that simple. I, I feel really bad because this is just too easy. Uh, so the VidPid Swapper is a nice little utility that will allow you to quickly create both your vendor ID and product ID randomly so that they're different every time you use them, uh, which is really great. If you look at the text file here, you'll kind of figure out how it's laid out. But um, let's go ahead and copy these guys to my root. This is the root of my Ducky drive, right? Paste that in there. Notice it takes a second because it does transfer pretty slowly. Um, has mainly to do with licensing issues with the duck and it being hella expensive to do really fast stuff. And honestly, for our uses, this is going to be fine. But uh, basically, all we have to do is run vidpid swapper, and we now have a vidpid.min. And we could delete this and run it again, and we'll get a different one. It's pretty fantastic. It's kind of like Mac Changer. I love it. All right, so now whenever we use this duck, we're always going to have, you know, we're going to use that vendor and product ID, which is a really cool feature of the twin duck. So, uh, yeah, there's my uh, text file, and now we're able to, uh, you know, extract passwords from Windows machines in just seconds. Here's the thing if you haven't figured this out already, both Windows Credential Editor and Mimicats are going to get picked up by antivirus. Duh! So, when we get back, we're going to do this again and not flag antivirus, because that's way more fun. Budding entrepreneurs, startups, and innovators are all turning their ideas into realities online, backed by the strength of a .NET domain. That's right, .NETs, they are globally known. It is one of the most popular domain extensions. A .NET domain injects your business with instant credibility, and entrepreneurs and startups are immediately discovering the advantages of building their web presence on a .NET domain. And if you already have a .com, well, you can purchase the .NET to protect your online brand. Or if the .com you want is already taken and you don't want to register a .com name that's like 25 characters long, don't worry, the .NET is the perfect alternative. And you can find a new .NET domain over at Domain.com. I love the Domain.com folks because it's affordable. .NETs are only $8.99 a year. They're totally reliable, easy to use, plus they're huge on social media. You can tweet them at Domain.com and Twitter. They have great customer support. It really just makes it a fun place to do business. And get this, the guys over at Domain.com, they want to hook you guys up because they're huge fans of Hack5. 
They want to give you 15% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code HAK5 at domain.com's checkout. That's 15% off and big time savings, so don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Last week's trivia question was, Ronald Rivas authored what cryptographic hash functions? And the answer that I was looking for is MD2, 4, 5, and MD6. Now this week's question is, the Merkle tree, that's an awesome name, was named after what security researcher and developer? You can answer that at hack5.org trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies. Good luck.